because I need to truly test them in all of the elements. Hey Beth Pally, I'm Allie, and I tried creating a homemade barefoot shoe out of a sock, and it was a 100% success fail. And then one of you Pallies commented that I should try Skinners, which are apparently very similar to this what? Ha! Huh? Look at that, that is my creation, homemade, except manufactured. So of course I had to try them out for you, and uh, we got an unboxing. Look at, this is the smallest shoe box I've ever seen. And we got this. What are they? Shoes? Are they socks? Are they super weird looking? Yes to all of those. Of course I had to get two pairs, always mismatch my shoes, so people ask me about my shoes and I have new friends. Yay! One gray, one blue. Ooh, they are flexy. The bottom looks like super thick sandpaper. It's cool. Get rid of my barefoot shoes for now. If you're not familiar with the minimalist footwear movement, the reason that you would want to wear something like this is because shoes could potentially be bad for you. We haven't evolved to walk with a thick sole in the same shape, striking our heel over and over again. So the type of gait you have with traditional shoes could cause problems and pain in your joints and all the way up to your back. And for sure a thick traditional shoe makes your feet weak. The actual muscles in there aren't working at all. And with these, you definitely have to land and use every little tiny little piece of strength you have. Having strong feet feels awesome and that's why I'm super into it. And what do we think of these? Ooh! Yeah, they absolutely feel like socks, but grippy. Bebo barefoot shoes are the thinnest sole I could find, three millimeters, and this feels like even more so I'm basically touching the ground. Let's compare it next to each other. Ah, oh, this is so interesting. Wait, it's weird how supportive this rubber now feels, which is crazy because there's nothing there. Oh, there's an insult too that I can take out. Let's get even closer to the earth. Just based on feel, this is awesome. But how do they feel long term? How do they stand up to all aspects of your life? I have several tests to make sure that we really put these through the ringer. Let's go. First test is to take them on a regular walk in the city. I am loving feeling connected to the ground. Even more so than barefoot shoes, they're forcing me to land on the ball of my foot. It's really cool. Although that could be a con if these are your first foray into minimalist shoes. You gotta work your way up to it, otherwise you're gonna hurt your feet. So strengthen all those tiny little muscles that you never use because you're in regular shoes. We have to make a point not to heel strike. This is exaggerated, but land toe first like that. How are we doing on grass? <laughs> it is super cool. Again, I thought barefoot shoes were really close to the earth and this is even closer. How's my speed in these? Better. <laughs> yeah, because you're usually a slow poke. Get out of here. She's extremely fast. I have trouble keeping up with her no matter what shoes I'm wearing. But another part of wearing minimalist footwear is that you take shorter steps now. Instead of reaching and heel striking, you're going more rapidly, but onto a ball of your foot. So you're taking more steps faster, but you're still going the same speed. All right, let's give them a little jog. Ugh, the things I do for you, pallies. Running sucks. Now I'm definitely landing on the ball of my foot. Heels not even touching. Honestly, it feels good. It's almost like I'm cushioning myself more, and so this would be better on my knees because I'm just very careful. I'm prancing around. Of course, I can't say that for a fact. A lot of people have some naysaying about minimalist shoes because they say it's bad for your joints, but seriously, it feels like I'm landing lightly, and then that would be better for me. It's also slightly more fun than running in regular shoes. Slightly. But for sure, I'm gonna be slower in these than regular shoes, so it's more challenging, but not as fast. Feels great. <laughs> Look at that long stride landing on your heel. The next test is to take them cycling. Hmm, I'd give it a solid meh. I'm not really enjoying being more connected to the pedals or anything. And it doesn't feel like there's any extra foot strengthening benefit. So there are drawbacks because I feel like I could get caught in the chain or kick a spoke or something. I don't have any protection. So I say for sure these aren't for cycling, although you can do it. I don't see a reason to. Next test is to see how they handle a hike. Bet you could have guessed. I love it. Again, feeling the ground and you you can definitely tell when you step on a rock it's slightly bigger than the other rocks because it kind of hurts. Certainly not as bad as actual barefoot. It's just sometimes you're like, eat. so you can't just mindlessly walk. You kind of got to think about where you're stepping. Let's see how they compare to actual barefoot. Oh yeah, it's way more protection than I was thinking. My barefoot is quite cold on this ground and this is doing a good job of keeping me warm. I do have socks on too. That's surprising because I wouldn't think a sock would make a big difference, but it's a big difference in temperature. And yeah, the sharp rock situation is certainly worse on that side than this side. For sure, they are hike approved if you want to be even closer to barefoot than minimalist shoes. But still pretty darn protected and warm. Speaking of stepping on sharp things, Skinner's actually sends a liability disclaimer to everyone that gets shoes. It basically says they're puncture resistant, not puncture proof, so don't step on things like nails and sea urchins, etc. And they also specifically say that escalators are dangerous. You should stand in the middle so you're not on the edge getting your sock shoe caught and then your whole body gets pulled in. 
no claims are made by the company that this is safe. <laughs> Speaking of dangerous acts, the next test is my favorite. This is the reason I bought Skinners. On their website, they have a video playing a dude who's doing Olympic lifting in them. I'm talking about weightlifting, not lifting weights. There's a difference. It's not uncommon to see people squatting or deadlifting barefoot. That's actually pretty good for you. But Olympic weightlifting, this guy's doing a clean and jerk. It's an explosive movement and you slam your foot down and I've never seen people do it barefoot. Or even in minimalist shoes in general. Actually, there are weightlifting shoes with a big heel. Let me show you. This is usually what I wear when I do Olympic weightlifting. See the lifted heel so that you get more range of motion. But I don't like it because my toes are crammed in the front. It's very not ergonomic. That's another reason for the barefoot movement. It's really not healthy to have your feet like that. It's not natural. So let's try some old only in some Skinners. How do we feel on the wood platform? Okay. Yep, about as slippy as any normal pair of shoes. Oh, this is gonna be weird. Just warming up. And heavier. Oh, weird. I can definitely feel myself landing lighter, which is not normal for Olympic lifting. Oh, I'm nervous. Ugh. Another thing is that it's quite quiet in these. In weightlifting shoes, they're a really hard sole because any sort of squishiness will reduce the amount of energy you can push in the floor and then therefore lift up. So soft tennis shoes aren't good for weightlifting. This is the weight I did last week in lifting shoes. Oh dear. We got one more. <laughs> Solid. It didn't hurt. So I do think if I was maxing out, it would hurt. It feels smoother, like I'm connected to the bar and the ground more, but I don't know if that's a good thing. You really want to explode up and slam down as fast as you can to get the weight up. And if I'm landing toe heel, I don't think that's as efficient as possible. And the Olympics is the height of human potential. I'm pretty sure they would have figured out that barefoot is better by now. So if I'm going for a personal record, I'm probably gonna stick with the lifters. But if I'm just doing some lifting below my max, it is pretty cool to feel more smooth and connected. So I might start doing this more. Let me know if you want a follow-up video discussing later what it does to my joints after a while. Now for deadlifting and squats, mm, they absolutely pass the test. But specifically with those two lifts, you want to be as close to the ground as possible, activating your whole foot to get as much power as you can. Barefoot is best for that, but it's gross. So I wear socks all the time in the gym, which is slightly less gross, and skinners are even less gross. Ugh, do they make hand skinners? We got a tear. How fortuitous is this? It's raining in LA today for the first time in, I don't know, years. Should I go socks or no socks in the sock shoes? Well, you might as well not be wearing socks because there are holes in them. <laughs> I invest in health and fitness things, not in fashion. Yeah. All right. We'll see if they soak through my stuff. I'm gonna wear sneakers like a normal person. <laughs> I'm super normal. Look how normal I look. I think the extra dopey part is that they come up to your ankle, which is a weird sock level. It feels like they'd be pretty darn fine in drizzly weather as long as it's not getting up over top of the black part. This rough part seems more water resistant than the rest. Uh oh, giant puddle. Well, let's just go for it. Beep, 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 beep. Oh, yeah, that is absolutely wet. Confirmed. It would definitely be fine in regular rain if I wasn't being so aggressive. I would say don't wear them in a downpour, but a regular old drizzle, if you're not gonna be jumping in puddles, you should be okay. Oops, who would ever do this? Oh, yeah, that doesn't even feel resistant on the top. And now, wet grass, it feels cool but I don't think it's getting through the rubber. I would say I wouldn't actively put them on if it's raining out. If you do get caught in the rain and it's just a little bit wet, you should be fine. Certainly a downpour would suck. Ooh, I found some mud too. Just doing it all for you, Pally. Feels way cooler than regular shoes squishing in this. I just realized my other barefoot shoes would not pass my sensible drain pipe test either. So it's not like the Skinners are a worse option. And now they're pretty gross. It's like you're writing the script for this video. It said gentle cycle. We don't have that. We have delicate. Yeah, that is the same. No, that's like, oh, I'm doing my lingerie. It also says put it into a mesh bag and turn them inside out. Shut up, I'm trying to do a video. <laughs> it is a major triad. I'm guessing it's a G major chord. Mm. 
Nailed it. Honestly, that was lucky. I can get close, but I don't have perfect pitch. Anyway, this is supposed to be about shoes. The music channel coming into my fitness channel. Okay. You don't need to fill up the whole entire life. You can tell I do laundry often. Also, my socks are soaking. In case you were wondering, it took about 24 hours to dry, which I guess would be the same as if you wash regular shoes, but you don't wash regular shoes that often. And you can tell that you're probably gonna have to wash these pretty often. And not so much the goo on the bottom that you're walking through, but the fact that this mesh is gonna get sweaty and gross. So for sure, I'm gonna be wearing socks with them all the time to try and extend the amount of time before it gets to gross. But the fact that they do get gross is gonna stop me from really making these my everyday shoes. So for the wash test, yes, they did fine. We'll call that a success. And if we're looking at a being low maintenance test, this is a fail. Next test, a big selling point on their website is how easy they are to pack. Whoa, look at that, roll up. And let's just, oh, how convenient there was a suitcase here. Let's see if I can find space for them. Excellent. Well, they made it across the country, great. But the real reason that I wanted to travel with them, go no socks and insoles to make it seem worse, is because I need to truly test them in all of the elements. Ooh, this is crazy. It feels like my feet are immediately wet, but I have a feeling they're not. We're grippy on the slippy stairs, that's nice. <laughs> it is crazy feeling snow, but still protected. Yeah, it's like I'm barefoot, but I also have superhuman feet where it's not really bothered. This would definitely get chilly. Kick around in there, get them on top too. Oh, uh, it's right off. This is surprisingly resilient. Yeah, I can already feel the tops are getting a little wet. This is maybe not the best choice for long-term snowing. It certainly is a fun and interesting choice. Yeah, feet are getting numb. That was very quick to cold. Well, they're not wet. I do feel like any longer in the snow and it would start to soak in, so this doesn't pass the deep snow test, but you could take them on ice if you want to deal with the chili. And I don't want to get them all soaked because... Skinner says they're also good for travel because you don't have to take them off for TSA. Of course, I have pre-check, so I can't scientifically test this out. Unless I convince one of them to try on my shoes and go through. <laughs> Made it through, and now it's like I'm hanging out in the airport in slippers. This is pretty great. Surprisingly slippery walking on this, so I guess the grip's not doing much on tile. You can get over the fact that you look gross, like you took your shoes off on a plane. I would say I'd recommend these for travel because it feels great, like you took your shoes off on a plane, but you didn't. Speaking of gross, this is what my niece thought of my Skinners. Why do you wear those shoes? Mm -hmm. You know, they're good for my feet. Makes them really strong. What is that face? You don't think they look cool? <laughs> Are they socks? Kind of. Shoes? Yes, you got it. He gets it. I know. So how durable are they? I've been wearing them for about a week and the tread looks completely unaffected. On their website, they won't give you an exact amount of time that they'll last, but they say that it could potentially be longer than a $150 pair of running shoes. So these were about $67 and as I was reviewing them, I started getting a ton of ads for similar things. I didn't even know shoe socks were a thing and there are a bunch of them that are much cheaper, but I don't know, are they as high of a quality? We saw all the passes and fails of these ones throughout the video. Let me know in the comments if you want me to review the cheaper ones by comparison. And if you liked this, you'll like seeing my 10 week journey to fully barefoot. I'll put that down there for you. Oh, oh, come on. Hey Best Pally, I'm Allie, and I've been wearing barefoot shoes for 30 days now, which is pretty cool, but we can go outrageouser. This video is the start of my journey towards full, actual barefoot, and I will